Greetings, Traveler. I'm Snip Jelly, and this is another reward video. In case you didn't know, uh, the very generous people on my Patreon that donate $10 or more get as a special reward that they get to choose a topic for one of my videos. And this topic comes from a guy uh, that I'm not sure if he wants me to use his name because in the email he calls himself Sergeant Stubby. So just to be safe, I'm gonna use that. Sergeant Stubby says that he is very interested in siege and particularly siege equipment of, of medieval Europe and asked me if I can talk about that. That. And yes, I can. So here it is. Now, the thing is, siege equipment or, or siege tools or whatever you would call them, it's a very broad term, right? There's a lot that I can talk about. So this video is just going to be a very quick gloss over general overview of, of a lot of different stuff. And if you guys are interested in this, then let me know by smacking the like button and I will make more videos going in more depth about more specific uh, siege equipment, right? And also, if you want to choose a topic for a future video, then you can by going to my Patreon and donating $10 or more. Link is in the description below. You will receive an email from me to which you can respond with the topic that you want, and uh, I will make a video about that. Simple as that. So, talking about siege equipment. Funny thing is, he specifically said siege equipment of, of medieval Europe, and the thing is, most siege equipment used in medieval Europe was not developed in, in, in medieval Europe. It was either developed way before the Middle Ages or not in Europe. So uh, you, you have the, the standard things like the catapults and, and ballistas and battering rams, which are all ancient designs, like way before the Middle Ages they were, they were made. Like a, like a ballista, for example, just, it's, a, it's a very big crossbow in a way. Uh, they were used to, to shoot giant arrows at the enemies and, and um, catapults. I don't think I have to explain what a catapult is. A catapult is, uh, but I, I will anyway. Catapult is, is, is a thing with a, with a cup or a sling and you put a rock in there and it shoots it away. Now, um, the difference between a cup and a sling, there's a slight difference. People say that the sling shoots further and is more accurate, but the, 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 the cup version of a, of a with catapult with a cup version is more um, accepting towards the different shapes but less accurate. I don't know how true that is, it's just something that I've heard. But uh, whatever, they were both versions with slings and versions with cups and they were called mangonels or onagers or all kinds of weird names that I don't know how to pronounce. Ballistas, however, ballistas were way more precise than catapults but they did not have as much firing power and also it was difficult because you had to have these huge arrows to shoot away rather than just a rock. But there were also designs of ballista that uh, shot rocks instead of these arrows. So those would, I, I would think that those are a bit more um, useful. And then there's things like uh, siege towers. And siege towers, um, they, were, they were, again, not medieval inventions, they were already used in ancient times, and they were used more in ancient times, because if you want to, want to besiege an, an ancient city with a huge wall, then, you know, you just roll the, the siege tower up against the wall and they use it. But when you want to besiege a, a medieval castle, which are castles are quite a bit smaller than, than ancient cities were, right? So a lot of them would have moats, and, well, a moat would protect, amongst other things, against siege towers. You can roll a siege tower up against the wall, if there's a moat, because, well, then the tower gets stuck in the moat. Battering ram is a very simple con uh, concept. You got a huge log-like object and you, you ram the, the door or gate with that. I don't think I really need to explain how that works, right? Now, the thing that you guys are probably all want to hear about is the trebuchet, of course. Oh, I could love myself some good trebuchet meme. Did, did you know that the trebuchet can shoot a 90 kilogram projectile over 300 meters? That's incredible. Now, funny thing about the trebuchets, though, that um, it's, it's, it's not European. <laughs> the, the, actually, there's two main kinds of trebuchet. The, the one that you're probably all familiar with is the counterweight trebuchet. I'll, I'll put, a, put a picture right there. Uh, but before that, there was another design called uh, the traction trebuchet. Uh, the traction trebuchet was uh, developed in China somewhere around four, the 4th century BC. Apparently, it's a very, very old design, and um, it, the principle is the same as the counterweight trebuchet, but instead of the counterweight, this trebuchet would have a bunch of ropes on one end, and you would yank those ropes. There would be a bunch of people standing there with the ropes in hand, you would load the trebuchet, and all of a sudden, all those people would go, boom, and that would uh, fling the rock away. That's how the trebuchet worked. Now, 
very simple uh, concept, right? But this was not very accurate because you were you, you had to depend on the people that were yanking the ropes. And if those people get tired, then the rocks are not going to go as far. And if those, those people are not always going to yank with the same strength and things like that. So this wasn't a very um, precise way of building a trebuchet. But it was a lot easier because one of the huge downsides of the trebuchet was that they were generally pretty big. And they were also very precise. There, You can find a bunch of things online about the, the precise measurements that a trebuchet should have. Like this portion should be this times as, as large as that. But fact of the matter is, when you're building a trebuchet, you'll, you're going to encounter a lot of problems because it needs to be incredibly precise. So when you went to, to besiege a castle or whatever, you had to bring somebody along that already knew how to build a trebuchet, that had experience building trebuchet, because if you get one of the measurements wrong, then the thing is just not going to work properly. So that's a huge, huge downside of the counterweight trebuchet. The counterweight trebuchet was, as far as I'm aware, first used by a man called um, Salahdin Yusuf ibn Ajub. Most commonly known these days as uh, Saladin, which um, is not particularly Europe. And after that, it was used by the Byzantines. And the Byzantine Empire is, is where now Turkey is, which again is not really Europe. But during this time, which is uh, like between the 11th and the 12th century, right? The Byzantine Empire actually reached further than it does now. It reached past Constantinople uh, or, or uh, Istanbul, right, and and partially into Europe. So we've reached Europe, hooray! Uh, but um, during this time, funny thing is, it was also about ish when the cannon was developed, and that kind of changed everything. Now, the first cannon was a, was a steam cannon. It was invented by the Greeks by by Archimedes, which is like. Uh, I don't know the precise date, but like 300 BC or something, he lived a little, very, very old. So you could say it's, again, not really medieval, though, but this this steam cannon was not very powerful. You couldn't, couldn't really use it all that well. The first cannon that was used in Europe was used by the Iberians somewhere during the 13th century. So that's, that's the Middle Ages, right? And uh, it's also Europe, because, well, I said it's Europe. The Iberians lived in where now Spain is, so that's Europe. The cannon kind of gradually took over because cannons were smaller and easier to, to take with you and they were just more powerful as well. But this doesn't mean that with the invention of cannons, all other siege equipment was no longer used. The cannons gradually took over, but Shevedin wrote that, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to read it yourself, but he wrote that it took nearly two centuries for the cannon to fully take over and that it was only truly achieved after the metallic shot took over, so considering that at first they used, um, they used stone uh, for the cannons. He also wrote that uh, the last usage of a trebuchet was in 1521, not in Europe, um, but uh, the, on a siege on the Aztec capital. Uh, because of a lack of gunpowder, they, they decided to mil make a trebuchet, because then they didn't have to use cannons, and then uh, they horribly failed. After the first shot, the, the, the stone that they, sh that they shot with the trebuchet it flew straight up in the air and landed right on top of the trebuchet itself, destroying it, and then they decided to give up and not, uh, not build a trebuchet anymore. So again, it comes to show that, that making a trebuchet was very precise uh, something. It's not, it's, not, it's not easy to build a trebuchet and have it work properly. Uh, so you could say, in a way, that the, the most prominent uh, medieval siege equipment was, was, was the cannon. It's, it's really just a cannon. So that was it guys. Again, if you want me to go into more detail about these things, then let me know in the comments below. And also, if you want to choose a topic for yourself, link to my Patreon is in the description. And thank you for joining my quest and I hope you'll join me in the next one. Bye guys.